the worst eating advice we've been given for decades. Unfortunately, has come from some of the most trusted sources in nutrition and health, from diet gurus to academic researchers, studies to books to news articles. Many of the facts that we've been taught about dieting and healthy eating may not be true at all, and it's quite possible that these myths and bad habits may actually be causing more harm than good when it comes to our health and weight loss goals. We present the eight worst pieces of advice on eating that we've been told over the past four decades. 1. Eat mostly low-fat foods The diet industry loves to preach that we should consume more low-fat foods, but in reality, low-fat is just another marketing term. The majority of low-fat products on grocery store shelves are actually high in sugar and carbs and will do little to help you lose weight. Instead of following fad diets and falling for marketing buzzwords, stick to whole foods like fruits, vegetables, and meats, your body will thank you. We were inundated the past three decades with low-fat foods and convinced by the big ad agencies that we had to buy the processed foods labeled low-fat yet people gain weight at an unprecedented rate. Low-fat foods tend to not give your body the nutrients it needs and in turn you end up eating more food to satisfy your body. Over time this equals added pounds in an unhealthier body. To everything in moderation. The problem with everything in moderation is it leads to the fallacy that you are eating healthy. One donut on one day, chocolate ice cream the next, followed by a small bag of chips the next day seems like you are eating junk food in moderation. However, this builds up a habit and that habit of allowing yourself to eat junk food packed with sugars and vegetable oils leads to poor health. This advice may seem wise but it is silly to believe that you can break the habits and more often than not that one donut per week turns into many more. 3. Consume very low amounts of salt Our bodies need salt to function, but most Americans eat way too much of it. The recommended daily limit is 2,300 mg, and most adults consume 3. 400 mg per day. Salt is necessary for nerve and muscle function, as well as balancing fluids in the blood and maintaining a healthy blood pressure. Please consider subscribing to our channel. We post daily health videos to help you live a more healthy life. Now back to our video. 4. Eat 6 small meals per day. There's no evidence that eating 6 small meals per day will help you lose weight. Indeed, multiple studies on meal frequency found no link between meal frequency and body fat percentage, with one study even reporting that obese women who ate two or three meals daily lost more weight than obese women who split their calories into six smaller meals. When you eat six meals a day, you are causing your insulin levels to spike six times, and thus making your body store more fat throughout the day. Eating fewer meals and not snacking will force your body to use fat as fuel more often which results in weight loss. This is why intermittent fasting has become so popular with many people eating two larger meals per day and even some eating one meal a day. 5. Eat your breakfast. Breakfast is a must, we were told as kids, but now. Some nutritionists say skipping breakfast can be a smart weight loss move. Indeed, research suggests that people who regularly eat breakfast tend to weigh more than those who don't. In fact, a study of 60,000 adults published in JAMA Internal Medicine found that those who skipped their morning meal had more healthy habits overall and tended to gain less weight over time. By extending your non-eating portion of your day it gives your body a chance to burn fat as fuel which is both good for weight loss and for keeping you from being hungry all day long. 6. Only eat lean protein Some nutritionists and doctors over the past few decades have suggested you to avoid fatty cuts of meat and only eat lean protein. The problem with this advice is your body requires fat. A healthy, well-balanced diet must include a small quantity of fat. Essential fatty acids, which the body cannot produce on its own are found in fat. Fat aids in the absorption of vitamins A, D, and E by the body. So don't be shy. Order the ribeye. 7. Replace saturated fat with vegetable oil. Saturated fat is something we've been told to avoid for decades. But it turns out, saturated fat isn't so bad after all, and might even be good for you. Saturated fat, such as that found in beef, cheese, and other dairy foods, have been linked to heart disease for decades. We've been taught to eat healthy fats like nuts, seeds, seafood, and vegetable oils instead. New research casts doubt on that assumption. There is no link between saturated fat and heart disease, according to a comprehensive evaluation of 72 studies. You might also consider adding some saturated fat into your diet by having an avocado every day or snacking on some almonds and severely cutting back on foods that contain vegetable oils. 8. Lose weight and get healthy. We believe the advice to lose weight and get healthy is actually backwards. Losing weight doesn't necessarily make you healthy, but changing your habits around eating, 
exercising, stress reduction and lifestyle can have a much greater result both in the short term and long term. Many people who lose weight by dieting end up putting that weight back on. By choosing to eat better foods, mainly whole foods such as meat, non-starchy vegetables and fruits and minimizing sugar intake, as well as processed foods and breads your chances of keeping the weight off increases. Making this fundamental change and choosing better nutrient-packed foods will leave you with more energy and ultimately eating less and feeling better. Choose to get healthy first and watch the weight come off and stay off. The best advice we can give you today is to eat healthy whole foods and avoid processed foods as well as foods and beverages packed with sugar. Keto and paleo diets can be very rewarding and there are a ton of recipes available now to help you keep it interesting. Also intermittent fasting has a ton of benefits and honestly isn't that hard to commit to and turn into a lifestyle. Whatever you do, make sure you don't always listen to the so-called experts and research what's best for you and what's working for other people. Good luck and thanks for watching. See you next time.